Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at setting row heights and column widths in Excel using custom units such as centimeters or inches. So I have just a regular worksheet here. I'm just going to select on a column, right click and choose column width. And if I try and make this, for example, 10 centimeters, you'll see that I get an error. And that would be exactly the same if I tried inches and it would be exactly the same if I tried row heights. The only thing that you can adjust column widths on the basis of here is whatever this 8.43 is, but also 64 pixels. So we can read off pixels and we have pixels here for row heights as well. We've got this height which is some magical value that Excel knows and doesn't particularly want to share with us, but the other value is pixels. So if we want to use centimeters for example, this is what you're going to do. We'll go across here to view and we're going into page layout and in page layout view we get a different set of settings. So I'm going to select this column, right click, go back to my column width and you'll see this time my column width is actually in inches. So if I want to make it 1.5 inches I'll just type 1.5 and then the double quote mark and that will make it 1.5 inches. You can also use IN for inches. So let's make it 1 IN and we're back to 1 inch and we can use centimeters. Let's go and choose our column width and let's make it 10 centimeters. And the same thing's going to happen with our row heights. Let's just use 5 centimeters here just to prove that it's all working just fine. Now that's really good but let me show you what's going to happen when we go back to normal. We're going to get these page breaks. So in normal view, we're going to have page breaks, which you may not want to see. Now, there's a way of solving this problem in the short term and there's a more long term solution. So in the short term, we could go to file and then come down here to options. Then we'll go to advanced and we're going to scroll all the way down until we get display options for this worksheet and go here and turn off show page breaks and click OK and our page breaks disappear. But remembering to do that every time is a really, really big nuisance. So what we could do is write this really, really simple macro for it. Now I'm assuming that you've got your personal XLSB macro workbook set up. If you don't, there's a link up here that you can click to go and create it. But we're going into the macros again on this view menu. We're just going to click in macros and I'm going to put a macro in my personal XLSB. And what I'm going to do is just give it a name and it's going to be toggle page breaks. Now if you're not really familiar with writing macros just don't put any spaces in here. They have to be no spaces but you can use this sort of camel case. So what I'm going to do is click here on create. Now this is where I can create my macro and it's a really really simple macro. So what we're going to do is type active sheet and it's going to be all one word. Now if you type it in lower case when you hit the full stop, which is going to be the next code and complete the command, if Excel recognizes what you've typed, it's going to put it in camel case. And so that's sort of an indicator that you've got things right. So what we're going to type next is display page breaks and it's all going to be all one word again. And then we're going to type an equal sign and we're going to type not, open our rounded brackets and then we're going to go and grab these words again, copy and paste them over here and finish off with our rounded bracket. And as soon as I hit enter, you'll see that all these commands now appear in camel case. And that's telling me that Excel understands exactly what I've asked it to do. So I'm just going to save my personal XLSB workbook. So now inside Excel, I can on, for example, my quick access toolbar, I can add that macro. So let's just go down to customize our quick access toolbar. Let's go to more commands because I need to go and get my macros. So here we're going to macros and we're going to come down here to find that one that I just created. So it's toggle page breaks. Here it is. I'm just going to add it to my quick access toolbar and click OK. So now let's have a look. What it does is instead of just removing the page breaks, it's toggling them. So we're not killing our ability to see page breaks. All we're doing is saying if they were turned on, turn them off. If they were turned off, turn them on. And so that 
little piece of code, that not code, is just doing that toggle for us. It's really simple macro and it's really handy macro to create. And it's also an indication to you that if there are settings in your options, there's a really good chance that you could make macros out of creating those settings or adjusting those settings for the kind of settings that you use all the time. So that's just a heads up there. So I hope that helps you. You can now conveniently change column widths and row heights using units such as centimeters or inches and you know how to get rid of those page breaks as a result of doing those changes if that's an issue for you. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results every time then you'll love my other YouTube videos. So give this video a thumbs up and click to subscribe to the channel. And on the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you to watch next.